It is Sunday, August 20th. It's about 6.30 in the afternoon. I've got a truck full of railroad parts. Uh, this is a typical load that I bring, or I've hauled before, I should say. It's, and unfortunately you can't see what it is because it's covered with all these tarps. Um, these are what I would call the parts that suspend the train and attach to the steel wheels. Um, picked it up in Michigan. It's going to Arkansas. I'm in Missouri right now, two and a half hours away. Cherokee, something or other, something or other, that's where I'm at. So, um, I know I talk too much and my camera moves a lot. If you're looking for a, a truck, uh, flatbed TV, where I welcome you, welcome viewers, and, and do all that. That's that's not what this channel is. So if you're looking for that, go look somewhere else. This is just covering the things that I do uh, on a daily basis, well, whenever I record. Got a loud truck next to me, so I'll try to uh, cover what I got going on here. This front tarp is a uh, lumber tarp. Yeah, this, this explanation's gonna get better as it goes. Got a lumber tarp. Steel tarp, steel tarp. When I was putting this on, uh, obviously I started the back and worked my way front. Um, I thought, okay, this is so low to the deck of the trailer, maybe I can just get away with using steel tarps. And uh, I got this one on, I was like, oh, this is gonna work. Now I do have three canvas tarps on underneath these because there are a lot of sharp edges. And the canvas tarp covers the top and edges of all the uh, steel parts. So the uh, this tarp ends right about here. So I've got probably four feet uh, of overlap. And then I put on the front steel tarp and I realized I was gonna come up short because it has to uh, come down off the top of the item and hit the deck of the trailer on the front and the back, at least in my mind it does. Uh, so I was like, well, I'm not going to put away a steel tarp. I'm just gonna bust out my lumber tarp and put that right over the top. Cause I, ain't, I didn't have time. I was like, I'm on the cusp of not making it home on Friday and I did make it home on Friday. Cha-ching! And uh, Friday night at like 11 p.m. And anyway, I got this on and went inside and got my paperwork. And the guy says, so did you tarp? And I said, yes, sir. So that's what my work assignment says. He says, oh, I was just about to ride on, write on your paperwork that no tarp required. And I'm like, oh, really? Yeah, I could have used that information about an hour ago. He's like, yeah, my bad. And uh, I could have gone in after they loaded and I secured with all my straps to get the paperwork. And I would have discovered at that time that maybe at that time that tarps weren't required, so I would have been done. But there are times, there are, I guess I've learned bad habits or, because there are shippers that do not give you your paperwork until you're done securing and done tarping. And since my load assignment said I had to tarp, I tarped and then went in and got my paperwork because if they don't, if the loader does not give you your paperwork, then you have and you have to go inside to get it. Well, in my experience, they've uh, always told me to go tarp and secure before they give me anything. So I got the tarp on, went in there, went to get my paperwork, and said what I said, and and uh, we had our laughs about it. And I was like, ha, 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 ha. oh, that's so funny. And uh, thinking to myself, you know what? I'm barely gonna make it home and I might have to, if I have to stop for fuel, this isn't gonna work. But uh, um, everything worked out. I didn't have to get fuel. Uh, I made it to the Madison yard with uh, about 30 minutes to spare on my clock. I was like, this is great. Cause I went through Indiana, Chicago, the nightmare zone. And on my side, not too bad. The eastbound side, oh, it was backed up for miles. So I was blessed that day to be able to make it home on Friday. 
So I'll drop this off in the morning in Arkansas and see where we go next. I just thought it was uh, such a pleasant thing at the at the shipper to find out that I didn't have to tarp this. Um, but whatever, I'm not gonna pull off my tarps now. Uh, I just decided, you know, it's on there, it'll stay on there until I get there. Um, Cause you know, these, tra these parts are exposed to the rain. They're coated in some kind of anti-rust agent as it is, so, but yeah. Let's see if we can take a look at the road. Nothing else going on. Oh, I should go inside and talk about the rest. The other driver. When I pulled into this lot, see if I can see it from up in my truck. Can't see it from here. Oh yeah, you can. This is why I wanna quit trucking. Can you see why? It is not that truck in the background. Let's see if I can point it out here. Tip of my finger, that white bag on the ground, that is a trash bag. Or I should say a consumer carry bag that you carry out of a store, but it's full of trash. And tied up and dumped right there on the uh, entrance or exit of this uh, place where you can get fuel and or park. So I saw that when I came in and I was thinking to myself, really? couldn't put that in a trash can. It's that kind of disgusting things that, uh, yeah, anyway, I can go on and on about that. Saturday, I uh, went to look at another truck. Um, this was a, a Ford F350 7.3 liter diesel. And I thought, wow, this one looks good. A lot of good pictures. Unfortunately, it was at a dealership. So it, that's always got, it, you always have to measure that with a grain of salt. Take it with a grain of salt, spoonful of sugar, whatever you need to take to realize that, you know, you're not gonna get 100% accuracy on any description or pictures. So, I mean, the pictures look great. Great interior, exterior look, you know, look nice. It was a nice blue color with like a gold bronze accent on the bottom all the way around. Looked fancy, just kind of what I needed. And got there, drove up with my wife, hour and a half away from my home. Come to find out, I was looking at, opened up the rear door, so I'm like, oh man, look at that body panel. There's a hole completely through it because of the rust. I'm like, oh. So I was like, oh, okay, maybe I, you know, I, if that is the only issue, which I knew in my mind, in my heart, that that wasn't going to be the only issue, I can live with that because I, you know, I'm willing to fix that. But I got underneath the bed of the truck and looked at the trailer underneath it for rust issues, and I was like, this is not a good sign because half of the rails for the bed that support the bed on the frame of the truck were missing due to the them being rusted away. And then I was like, all right. I can live with, you know, the, the bed is not that important to me for what I need to use it for and stuff I can replace and fix. I looked at the cab and I was like, oh, rust everywhere. I knew it was, it would be a matter of months or even less than a, a couple years and that thing would, I'd be staring through the floorboard. So when I drive, if I were to purchase it, so I let, didn't test drive it or anything. I just, uh, Spent my five minutes looking at the undercarriage while my wife was talking to the dealer and, and I came out and said, yeah, thanks for, yeah, I, I don't even remember what I said. I just, yeah, I'm not interested in this because of the, the amount of rust. I just got rid of a, sold my vehicle because of rust for parts and uh, I'm not interested in, in finding another car I'm going to sell for parts in the near future. So anyway, I deliver this in the morning. We'll see what happens.